Now, let's say you don't want to programmatically route users, but you want to create uh, some kind of navigation bar. And you know that navigation bar is always going to have the same exact routes all the time. So instead of using the use router hook to get the instance of router and call router.push, which you could do, uh, Next also provides the link package that you can use for client-side navigation between routes. Okay, so what we can do is instead of let's get rid of this use router hook okay and let me just get rid of this on click event listener what we're going to do instead is we're going to go ahead and use the link component that comes from the next link module okay and in between the link uh well let's first pass in a prop the href prop and this is just going to be the path that it's going to link to. So right now we're in the users page. So for this is the blogs route. So we're gonna go ahead and just pass it slash blogs. And I can pass in an A tag. And I don't need the href for the A tag because I already have it up here for the link component. And I can just go ahead and do blogs page. So let's go to the users page now. So I'm on the users page right now. Notice how if I refresh, I actually now have a cursor on the blogs page. So when I click on it, it's going to take me to blogs. Let's do the same thing for the blogs page. So let's get rid of the event listener, the on-click event listener. Let's get of the let's get rid of the router, and let's go ahead and add a link tag. In between, we'll nest an a tag, and for the link component, we do need to pass in the href attribute and that's just going to navigate the user to the users page okay don't worry about these errors these errors were happening as we were writing the code so of course it's going to pop up but let me refresh and you'll see that it's gone no errors at all and let's click on users brings us to the users route or the users page and then click on blogs page bling brings us to the blogs page Cool. And you can imagine that if you have more routes, you could just do the same exact thing. Okay. And of course, uh, if you're, uh, if you have dynamic routes, you can also do the same exact thing as well by just passing in the, uh, the route ID at the end. You can also do other stuff too, uh, with the link component. So instead of just passing it, passing in a string, you can pass in an object so you can specify the path name. So let's do users for path name and you can also pass in query parameters too if you want to so let's do id one two three so let's go to the blogs page right now so when i click on users notice how on the top over here it adds the query parameter id equals to one two three okay so remember this is a query parameter not the route parameter okay uh, you can also add a bunch of other query parameters too. Let's just say filter. Uh, let's we can let's say filter by created on something like that. So let's go back to blogs page. If I click on users, it'll go ahead and populate the query parameters for us. So that's also something use that you might something that you might find very useful. And of course, if you want more, uh, if you want more of a reference just go to the next.js docs look under next link package under the api reference and check out all of the documentation and see what you can actually do or what more you can do with the link package okay but like i said most of the stuff here are pretty straightforward so we'll just end it right over here so thank you for watching and i'll see you all in the next episode peace out